This is what life was like 20 years ago until this metal man completely changed everything anyone knew about gaming. And now, his biggest appearance is in Fortnite. Halo, one of the greatest games of all time, deserves a whole lot better. And this video is why, explained in LEGO. Now way back in 2001, video games looked like this. And LEGO looked like this. Yeah, things really needed some touch-up back then. But in November of that year came the game that would change the gaming industry forever. With a console that would be loved by millions of fans. Xbox, meet your little brother, Halo. Back then, Halo was more than just a game about a frozen spaceman who you got an nice. e-girlfriend, fell out of the sky, and saved the day. No, it was a story. A story that put you in the shoes of a super soldier. You got to be <laughs> top dog, punching aliens, blowing up metal balls, and partying in the back of the warthog with your friends. You got to revolutionize the gaming industry. You were literally right in the middle of it. Master Chief was given very little dialogue and never showed his face, so you could be the guy or girl behind the mask. That first game made a combat loop that was fun, unique, and could last for hours. Even from day one, Halo was off to a great start, but the next 10 years got even better. With the release of Halo 2 and then Halo 3, Bungie was making millions on game sales, merchandise, and so much more. Halo was at its peak, and everybody knew it. Halo 2 brought better ways to play, like matchmaking with friends online. It added sexy new armor, oh, yeah. customizable player species, and even added depth to a story about a spaceman and a giant lizard that became entangled in a pile of poo. Only three years later, the pinnacle of Halo came to a brand new generation of consoles, Halo 3. This game launched the Xbox 360 into success and paved the way for even more shooter games to try new things. Bungie added spicy new elements like equipment to change up gameplay, even more sexy armors, and gave a story that let every single fan finish the fight. Halo 3 made a huge splash in gaming and put Halo at the center of everyone's attention. Everyone who was anyone wanted an Xbox just so they could play this awesome new game. So if you were cool enough to have the 360 and a copy of Halo 3, you were lucky. All the boys were about to spend the night at your house. With Halo's immense popularity, the mid 2000s to the early 2010s were full of the co-op split screen that was introduced way back in the beginning of the franchise. This style of gameplay gave players the chance to sit on the couch with their friends, to snuggle up with the boys, and play all night long. Oh, yeah. Halo pioneered what we now call friends in the gaming community. Split-screen co-op has largely been abandoned by games these days, and even Halo can't do it well anymore. Gone are the days when everyone would hang out on the couch for hours together. Now we all do it separately in our parents' basements. This community was truly Halo at its prime. And it even got big enough to sponsor something completely new, building toys. Unfortunately for Halo, the whole military zombie shooty shooty pew pew theme it had going on didn't really mesh well with a brand like Lego. That is where Mega Brands comes in to create something that is marginally different, cheaper, and had much worse quality. Halo Mega Bloks was met with some pretty fair criticism when it was released in 2009. Concurrent with the launch of Halo Wars, the Halo Mega Bloks toy line was supposed to represent the vehicles, players, and enemies you see in the game. A decent choice to promote the new game, but also an odd one considering the Halo everyone was familiar with was completely absent from these things. Despite that though, Halo Mega proved successful, kind of. The early criticism it received, though, was pretty warranted. Early Halo Mega sets were often terrible when it came to design and part quality. The builds were sometimes sloppy, and even the figures, which remain the best part, would often break in areas like the hands and the joints. The micro-scale action figures were different enough from LEGO to be unique. Hey, always over here, soldier. But the actual building parts were mostly identical, so it made it tough not to compare Halo Mega to the amazing LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars sets that were being released at the time. I mean, who would go for a janky warthog over these beauties, right? Regardless of the early hate, Halo Mega Block stayed true to its design and offered something that LEGO never could. It propelled Halo to its climactic finale with Bungie. Halo Reach was the final success for Bungie and its send-off of the beloved franchise. If this game sucks, man, some Halo fans didn't love it, and rightfully so. It changed the multiplayer a lot with armor abilities that no one liked. But overall, the game was loved by those who enjoyed Halo. The campaign featured the excellently crafted noble team with realistic armor designs and a hefty military aesthetic, and it made Halo Reach feel familiar yet new 
2. It pushed the Xbox 360 to its absolute limit, with graphics that honestly look pretty good today. Halo Reach was increasingly special due to the vast multiplayer experience with a Forge world that has yet to be surpassed by any other game. A sandbox like that with so many tools for creators was magical. Halo Reach was Fortnite creative before Fortnite was even bored. But like Emperor Palpatine's rule, all good things eventually must come to an end. Sometimes they burn, and other times they turn into something much, much worse. Like Disney's taking over of Star Wars, the new studio, 343 Industries, wanted to make some changes to the beloved franchise they got a hold of. While some bungee folk managed to stay with Halo, most of the new studio was full of people who hated Halo. Isn't that such a good idea? Hire people who hate something to do it. Like hire a hockey player who hates flying to fly a plane. Yeah, that went well, didn't it? Why they thought that was a good idea is beyond me, but clearly, whatever strategy they had didn't work. 3 for 3 has been at the helm of Halo for longer than Bungie ever was, and yet hasn't produced a game even close to as polished as any of the previous Halo games. Because of completely botched releases and broken promises, most of the kids these days have never even heard of Halo or just dismissed the game entirely. Fortnite is the closest the Master Chief has come to being the revered super soldier he used to be, and Halo Infinite flopped harder than LeBron in the finals. Then with the downfall of Halo, so too have the toy lines decreased, the figures disappeared, and Halo Mega has been reduced to less than six sets a year. Halo has become a pitiful version of the glory it used to hold. Now, Halo is nothing more than a faded memory, a forgotten game, and a studio that ruined it all. But is it really over for Halo? What can we do to help Halo come back? Well, honestly, not that much. Truth is, Halo is a fantastic game and was an awesome game way back in the day. But under 343, Halo just has no legs to stand against some of the amazing games that are currently played today. What Halo had going for it is the fact that it was different from other FPS shooters and other games that were on the market. Halo was always at its best when it was a trend setter, not a trend follower. And these days, that's all 343 wants to do is follow the trends and get us to spend a lot of money doing it. Halo and 343 need to go back to the roots of the game, to focus on the nostalgia and the things that made the game so special. Halo is definitely not as popular as it used to be, but there are still loyal fans out there who want to see this game succeed, and who want to enjoy playing what they feel nostalgic for, and that's what 343 needs to do. They need to bring back the classic feel of Halo, bring back those loyal fans, or else Halo will be simply a memory lost in time. Halo may not be the game it used to be, but what has come from Halo deserves not to be forgotten. The franchise has brought about things that many of us may not even realize. Mr. Blue Hair himself got his start on Halo, Halo CE gave us advanced enemy AI and storytelling for a game like we'd never seen before. Some of you may be too young to have memories of Halo, some of you may have forgotten your love for Halo, or some of you may just hate Halo entirely. But the truth is, Halo deserves a whole lot better. Halo deserves to be a beloved franchise, to be the franchise that gave us couch lovers a chance to hang with friends. Halo deserves to be praised for what it did, what it used to be, 